A Stars R1 isn't your average mini PC. This one has a clear goal as a simple NAS or media server, both which I don't use and don't have experience with. So this is my first foray into the world of NAS mini PCs. How exciting. And the R1 is a good place for beginners to start since it's inexpensive and relatively easy to set up, hardware wise. Software? Not so much. There's a steep learning curve if you know nothing about networking, unless you're doing very basic stuff. Anyway, I guess it was time to pop that cherry. So, NAS, for those not part of the Cool Kids Club, stands for Network Attached Storage. Even if you're a beginner, you've probably had experience with the cloud. Yeah, not the stuff up there, but online storage. Well, you can have your own local cloud storage to share your files or home movie collection amongst all your devices. How does it work? That's what I had to find out during the review process. More after this message. The EaseUs Data Recovery Wizard app is very simple to use and can help you recover your lost data, whether it's on your internal drive, USB storage, or SD card. It also has support for repairing damaged photos and videos. Check out the free trial in the video description to find out what it can recover on your storage drives. AUSTARS R1 is much bigger than your average mini PC because it needs to house those ancient spinning rust 3.5 inch storage drives, which I haven't used inside any of my PCs for at least 14 years. I still have external USB portable drives for storage, but for this, I had to jump on Facebook Marketplace and buy a couple of 3.5 inches to test with. Mine's too small. The R1 is one large plastic container which houses Intel's popular N100 budget CPU, a four core Alder Lake chip with UHD graphics that has been extensively covered on this channel. Build quality of the can is fine on the outside, plastic used for the top lid and hard drive caddies, eh, not so much, but it does the job. The mini is easy to open thanks to the magnetic lid, which gives you access to the hard drive caddies. A Stars R1 starts at $250 US for the model that comes with 16GB of DDR4 and a 512GB storage drive on Amazon.com, or you can get it for a bit less with a bare bones version with no memory or storage. On the front is a power button, and that's all. The ports are all on the back. From the top, an audio jack, dual USB 2, dual USB 3 10 gigabit, display port, HDMI, a full function USB C port, yep. I tested it, supports power delivery and display. Also, a micro SD card reader and two Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN ports. To open it up, you have to remove four glued on rubber feet. Ugh. Then four screws and you can pull it out. All right, so on this side, you can see one of the two SATA hard drive connectors, the DDR4-3200 memory, which is 16 gigabytes, but 32 gigabytes is the maximum. There's an NVMe drive and Intel's Wi-Fi 6 AX200 M.2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. A CMOS battery on the side and a pretty chunky heatsink and fan for cooling the N100, even if it is just aluminium. Oh, and there's a second SATA drive connector. Underneath it is a fan for general cooling of everything inside. These toolless hard drive caddies aren't easy to mount. I prefer just using screws. Anyway, let me just wrestle with it and through the power of video editing, I'm done. I have to say slotting the hard drives into the SATA connectors is not as easy as it should be. Anyway, slide the system back in, screw it back together, fire it up, and both my hard drives are detected in Windows 11 Pro, which is pre-installed on the NVMe drive. I was asked about maximum storage size. AUSTAR lists 20 terabyte drives as a limit, but from my experience, drive limits don't exist. Sometimes even memory limits aren't correct. Intel's supposed 16 GB RAM limit on the N100 chips has been proven to be false time after time. Anyway, as long as your drive is SATA and fits in the case, it should work. Windows has been modified, with initial setup being cut down and the desktop icons slightly changed. Since the Ace Magic malware debacle, I always scan the copy of Windows with Defender and Malwarebytes. But this time, I also reinstalled Windows 11 Pro from scratch after messing around with other operating systems. Windows activated fine and found all drivers through Windows Update except for the Intel 2.5G LAN ports. The driver is easy enough to find online with the model number. I also tested Ubuntu off a USB drive 
and all hardware looks to be working fine as well. Of course, since this is a NAS focused device, advanced users won't actually use the Windows install it comes with, but it can come in handy for a simple media server using something like Plex or Jellyfin. To start with, I tested the Mini with my usual benchmarking routine in Windows against all the Mini PCs I've reviewed. In single core, the R1 performs like an N100 should. That's not the case in multi core. The default BIOS setting reduces the power limit and the score is on the lower end. So I upped the BIOS to performance mode and we're getting closer to what the N100 can do. And that's a 15% improvement. Video encoding performance was below average on my unit. A combination of lower multi-core and DDR4 memory. And DDR4 always scores a few percent below DDR5 and 100 minis in both the DX11 and DX12 graphics benchmark. Overall performance on the R1 is average. Intel's N100 has limited PCIe lanes to go around, and so NVMe SSDs are often capped. This one is limited to X2 speed, and the included drive pretty much maxes out the bandwidth available in sequential read and write. To visualize the difference in the default and performance power modes, I tested a CPU heavy game, and you can see performance mode adds quite a bit to the frame rate. And that's all the game tests for this video, as I've done plenty on my many N100 mini PC reviews. So since I know jack squat about networking, and had limited time to learn, I looked up a bunch of video guides as I jumped into the deep end of using Proxmox and containers, thinking I'd get up and running pretty quickly. But no, all the guides I watched were terrible. Did I say terrible? Sorry, I meant dog shit. All of them acted as if you already have networking experience, skipping over important information, not explaining what options do, or how to find the information to fill them out. If I had that knowledge already, I wouldn't need to watch a guide in the first place. So instead, I recommend beginners go with something like Open Media Vault, which is easier to install and set up a network drive that you can connect to. Plenty of decent guides for that. One thing you should be aware of is that the R1 is a simple NAS mini PC with two storage drives and you need some kind of backup in case things go south. With the R1, you'll probably be best off getting two drives of the same size and running them in RAID 1, which is basically a mode that mirrors the data on both drives. So if one drive goes cactus, you won't be screwed sideways without any lubricant. However, for those just starting out and looking for a simple media server, you can install Jellyfin in Windows on the R1, add your movies, and connect to it with your other devices. Again, you'll find plenty of bad tutorials that don't cover the actual network connecting aspect, but I got there in the end. Anyway, here are two devices playing different 1080p movies off the R1, and CPU utilization mostly hovers around the 15-20% to mark with 5GB of memory used. In the BIOS in the Advanced tab, you'll find a bunch of options such as wake on LAN and even turn off the power LED if it annoys you. The data I'm showing you now is taken from Windows tests. Without any hard drives, the R1 idles at 11 watts. With two 3.5 inch drives, idle power draw jumps to 22. So about 5.5 watts extra per drive. Maximum power draw depends on the power mode and whether you throw in some hard drives. At its maximum, the R1 peaked at 51 watts. A 65 watt USB-C power supply will easily handle the R1 at maximum if you don't want to use the included power supply. Of course, CPU temp depends on power mode and whether you've got hard drives as well. It's no surprise the R1 runs this cool when it has a sizable second fan below it. However, the fan speed for it is static and the noise level is the same whether it's idle or load, which is not quiet. It's even enough to drown out the sound of my hard drives. Since it's a constant noise, you do get used to it, but the noise level is annoying if you're close to the can. You want to place it further away, or you can switch the bottom fan for an Octua one. And sure, the NVMe drive has no cooling, but that doesn't matter with the bottom fan blasting cool air towards it. The R1's NVMe recorded a low max temperature. So, to summarize, what I like about the AU Star R1 is the all-in-one solution for putting together a NAS or media server. 
250 US dollars seems reasonable for what you get. It's got a good set of ports, even a full featured USB-C. Windows activated for me when I reinstalled it, so you should be able to mess around with other OS's and still have a valid Windows license. Temperatures are low across the board, but that comes at the cost of fan noise, which is constant at least. A two drive setup leaves you with less backup opportunities. Either run it in RAID 1 or back it up manually with a USB hard drive or something else. This really isn't a beginner solution to just turn on and then with a few clicks be up and running. It comes with Windows 11 and you need to go from there all by yourself. So the hardware itself is overall pretty well done for a beginner. Unlike the software side which is definitely a minefield and not as easy as it should be. Be prepared for quite a few hours learning the ropes for more complicated setups such as using containers in Proxmox, trying to get something like Jellyfin and GPU hardware transcoding going. Definitely not my thing, or something I'm interested in pursuing further. But for a simple NAS or media server, the AU Star R1 does a job and is affordable. If you're an advanced user, you already know whether it's a viable option for you or not. Find it linked in the video description for those interested, and if you prefer a similar mini PC option with no internal hard drive support, you can check out my review of the Minix Z100 Aero right here. Cheers!